Okay, welcome back to the Hesitate Homesteader. We are doing part two of fermentation with our friends Heidi and Anna today. And we are going to learn how to do sourdough, which I'm excited about because mm. I had one a long time ago <laughs> and <Really>? I failed. <laughs> I used it for a while <laughs> and I did okay, but then we got really busy. I think it was like when I had my last baby. So really this is great timing, you know, I'll probably <laughs> fail again. Uh, <laughs> we'll test the reminders. But I, I, yeah, I let it sit too long and I, it just was not looking pretty at all. What does so, it look like? Um, you know, kind of turning black. <laughs> <laughs> Not we can start with that actually <laughs> unless it was actually molded when there is a so when you're going to store it for a while and you don't want to do anything with it i always put it in jars like this with a little bit less than this maybe like half full and okay. that black liquid that forms is fine it's got a name it's called the hooch oh man see uh -huh. i didn't ruin it oh, you, did it name. you got hooch. i looked at it i was like <laughs> That surely is not good. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a good name, but you it know. Doesn't. No, it's the wrong yeah. story. <laughs> it's just the liquid okay. you pour it off and you. Just good to know. On. How long can you let it sit like that? Well, generally, if you're going to dormant it for a while, yeah. it's in the refrigerator. If you go to like Sourdough Home website or like all these other people that are super technical. They're gonna like tell you to feed it every X amount of time when it's dormant or it's going to die. I'm here to tell you guys, I have kept starters again for years. This was one of the first things I started was sourdough. I actually don't remember if kombucha or sourdough was first, but I think it was that sourdough. I haven't yeah. killed one starter. Like I've, uh, I have cheated. Because you're the year. No, you're because you <laughs> don't I'll really. I'll probably no, 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 no. It's not any of that. <laughs> These go dormant in the fridge for a really long time. I'm talking months, guys. Okay. I'm pretty sure probably at least a year. So we before. can probably do this successfully. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, this goes against all the rules, and they'll say you have to feed it. It's no good. You can't bring it back. It's temperamental. I'm here to tell you, mine is bubbly, and it's been dormant for months. Ah. <laughs> months, guys. She brought it back to life just for me. What a few days with really right there. with. I didn't even follow the correct methods. <laughs> so I will show you the better methods, but you can just quickly throw some stuff in and feed it. Is it going to make awesome bread at that stage? Absolutely not. No. But have you killed it that you can't keep it? That's what I'm getting at. You can okay. keep it going unless you're getting into mold and some really nasty stuff, which I have never had happen. So it just needs to be woken up. Yeah. 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 But Breathe store the it in glass that was really clean and plastic lids mm. like don't use metal okay that's why we have this dinky spoon <laughs> um, <laughs> it's cute yeah. to make fun of us. so let's say <laughs> you're going to start your starter try i'm not going to get into how to start a starter first of all i have never done that because i haven't needed to there's people you can buy cultures now we're in a whole new world you can buy things now mm -hmm. at the stores and everything yeah you can rehydrate them they all have instructions that's great um, or you find friend. So I've always had, fr I've been super blessed with lots of people ahead of me that have done doing this for years, longer than I have. And awesome. I just get started from them. I got my last one from her because when we were moving, I just got rid of that kind of stuff for the time being. So, but I had had that starter for probably 12 years. The same wow. starter. Wow. Oh, no, no. No, I had given it to my friend and she keeps it going and then I get she, it from her. She babysits <laughs> that little yeah. baby. She, no, she, she keeps it going. Sit. Sarah, if you watch this, you're uh, amazing. Uh, I taught, taught her friend. and she is now like makes it for money and stuff. She's awesome. Oh. I'm not. Wow. I don't do that. I let it go and go buy bread. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to show you how to make it. This is, when I had two kids or less, this is what I did. As I've added kids, yeah, it does. It's, it's crazy. so hard to fit it all in. Yeah. But we're at a stage that's really exciting, and I think you guys are too, like where the kids are getting older, so now you can either yeah. have more time or yes. you pass it to them. So kombucha went to my son, and this yeah. I'm hoping my daughter takes on. So. And Zoe, if you're watching this. Yeah. <laughs> that's this your hate, Zoe. <laughs> <laughs> so... We're going to start from the assumption that you have gotten a starter from a friend. Sorry, okay. I hope you have to phone a friend here at this point. So, 
you're probably only going to get about a half a cup from that person or if you have a starter that for whatever reason you've kept and you're just intimidated that you've got from this friend from years ago same thing or not years ago a while ago so let's assume oh i may need an extra cup let's are you allowed to use metal well no but i do it's okay <laughs> it turns out i haven't killed it yet <laughs> I love it's it. It's on the metal. We have four. I mean, like she a asked second. for a wooden spoon. <laughs> we have, but this. we're using. <laughs> don't use a metal bowl. Okay, okay. we're gotcha. like sitting in. I'm sorry, I don't buy that. That second is gonna hurt it. Okay. Oops, I knew I was gonna floor. say it. Didn't. It's a sorry, crap. I may get in trouble from the <laughs> sourdough people. <laughs> I'm not an expert, by the Sardo, way. please. Okay, this is real life people. <laughs> Actually, you'll need another one. So, when you're doing your starter feeding, um, I wish I had the my papers from it, but again, we moved into the packing situation. <laughs> so I only have falls. littler ones. That's fine. Okay. We make two. I mean, I have a third cup. Okay. So, let's say that's about, I, I put in about a half a cup of starter or a little bit less. Okay. And as you can see, this one has some bubbles going. That means it's alive. It's doing its thing. Is this an awesome starter to do bread with right now? Mm, questionable. You can make pancakes with it at this point. So what the key is, though, if you're not going to measure, I'm assuming I'm talking to a lot of moms that are busy or dads, whatever. Don't want to put people out. But most people <laughs> in America don't weigh their food, you know, like. I don't know, most home cooks don't weigh stuff that much, okay? Like if you're really gonna get really fancy, go to Sourdough Home. It's kind of a chintzy website, it's been around for years. He has lots of really fancy information about it. It's an old school site, packed full of awesome information. Nice. You're gonna do equal <laughs> amounts by weight. And because I'm a mom, I'm not gonna weigh mm -hmm. this. So the old okay. school way of doing that is about, so she gave me a third cut measure here. So if I'm gonna go by that with this half cup here or two thirds cup here, I'm gonna test in your math skills. Yes. Well, I'm not gonna that fancy. Do this. I usually do this by cups and half cups. You gave me a you third. Let Joanna do this part. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pretend this is a half cup. That's a lot easier, and that was a cup or a half cup. It's kind of idea about me and bang it with all the conversions. <laughs> Basically, you. you're gonna want to the amount of flour and water that's gonna be put into this. You don't want it to be more than a one-to-one -one ratio okay mm. okay this yeah, is this where my friend and I who have done this for years who just went back today during a ball game and read what the real people tell you to do and we were giggling because we the didn't follow people. these rules <laughs> <laughs> you know like the professional people with a website or something I don't know I have learned though anyone can do that guys. Uh. it's not all real <laughs> um, <laughs> anyways you're going to want to proportion this that there is the feeding, what you're doing right now, we're feeding it, isn't more than what you have in here, okay? So you, you can't put like a whole cup of flour to a half cup starter, okay? Okay. okay. And if you're not going to measure it for the volume, then you're going to do slightly more flour than water. Again, this isn't exact science because everyone's house is different. Everyone's mm -hmm. bacteria in there, you know, the temperature and the flour itself, has this been sifted? Is it like been sitting? You know, all those kind of things come into play for what that is. So it's definitely like if anyone's made bread, you guys make bread ever? Mm -hmm. So like, you know, it's not like there's not a huge like you can't say A, B, C turns out to this ever. Yeah, it's right. always going to do something different. Same with the starter. You just have to learn and just be confident. Like I was even doing those same steps here myself, and I didn't turn out the same every time. I was like, huh, yeah. my bread looked different last time. Guys, I make <laughs> bread machine stuff. I know I'm making sourdough here, but I make bread machine dough every year for Christmas or lots of stuff, but I will make the exact same recipe twice in a row, same day, exact ingredients, there's always one dough that turns out better than the other. Mm -hmm. Every single huh. time, and one pan of cinnamon rolls is always better than the other one. Across the so there's just factors well, that you can't determine. So be okay with failure. Don't be mm -hmm. afraid. Just so feel it, don't measure it. Just this is it. all I do. Just go. I just, just go for it. a heaping. This is a half cup. <laughs> Or so. Very big. <laughs> so that, and then I'm gonna have water in that, about that, okay? Overflowing. I can't yeah. overflow water, Heidi. 
Just so you know. Well, you're not supposed to, remember? We're going by volume, but because we're not weighing it, you have to have a little bit more flour than to the water. That makes yeah. perfect sense. So you, you don't, when they say equal, because I've read that before, and they're like equal parts, but it's not really equal parts, it's equal volume. So that mm -hmm. throws people off, and you're going to get a very loose consistency starter, yeah, which is okay. You can do that. It's just, it just changes it. It's what, So a little bit it? more flour than water. Yeah, my rolls okay. are this. I can do that. So with like, a tiny spoon. With my baby spoon. <laughs> so you're just wooden. mixing this. So the rule of thumb is... If you are using like white flour with water or whatever, like this and feeding it, this actually needs more. I don't know if you can see. More this water? Thing. I would say for me, this is a bit on the thick side. Okay. I like a little bit, I don't know if you, if you can see this. This is like, oh sure, okay. it's a little bit. This is what I prefer. Everyone prefers something different because for me, my starter is not used solely for bread. I will use this to make pancakes, mm. um, biscuits, whatever. Like, so I like slightly, not super gummy. Like this is almost like, I don't know, what would that consistency be? I like closer to a thick pancake batter. Yeah. So you mix it really well, no lumps, all that jazz. Some rules though, don't use a metal container. Um, if you're mixing for a while, probably a wooden spoon is better. I do grab metal ones. I haven't ruined anything yet doing that. Um, flour wise, no bleached flour. Um, I have never used bleached flour. That sounds really weird. Um, because we just buy in bulk. I've never used bleached flour for this. I've used bleached flour, for, but not for this before. But my friend that's done this for years, she told me today that she was in a bind and had bought bleached flour and she said everything was turning out wrong when she went through mm. that bag of flour. Mm. And she had always heard that rule, but didn't, yeah. Yes. So definitely mm. go for the unbleached. I always do unbleached King Arthur, and I do do bread flour. I don't always feed with bread flour. But it would turn out? Um, but if you're going to, I'm a believer in using bread flour for the protein and all of that going on. I do think okay. it turns out better. If I'm in a bind and I don't have it, I will most certainly use all-purpose flour. Okay. Um, I will feed with either one. I also don't feed with um, whole grain. A couple reasons. It's cheaper to feed with a not whole grain. Okay. Really just, right, right. You know, yeah. when you get into this more. And you can have rancid issues with whole grains. Like you just, you'd have to babysit it more. And maybe that's why there's more rules. I've always used unbleached bread flour or all purpose and have had really good results. It kind of depends what I've bought and then what's been on sale um, and what I'm going to do with it. So you do this twice a day, morning and night, okay? If you miss it, it's not the end of the world, you know, whatever. You can do it more than that throughout the day, but as it grows, like, so the next time I do this, I'm going to need to do double of everything I just did here because my volume here is larger now, okay? That's a little bit of a key. I will say that if I'm keeping it going on the counter and I'm not going to do anything with it until Saturday morning breakfast and I'm slowly growing the volume over the week, I don't always worry about those proportions at that point. I'm more worried about just keeping the feeding going and I don't want it to get really big and I don't like to throw it away. You can throw it away or have to go make something with it so you don't mm -hmm. have to throw it away, but I know there's certain weeks that I'm like, I don't have time to do anything with it other than feed it and I don't like to throw it away. And it still worked fine for pancakes and such. Okay. If I was doing bread, I wouldn't do that. I would go back to the actual rules of building it properly with your ratios to the starter, to the flour and water and keep so that if, closer together. if you together. did not want to, what, how, what amounts would you use? So if, if I was just feeding this for the next time and I'm not going to use this, let's say it's Monday and I'm not using it till like Friday, I would do maybe like for this amount, which is about a cup of starter, cup and a half at this point, maybe like a cup of flour to three quarters of water and kind of go from there. As long as you're getting bubbles in between, it's smelling like sourdough, it's growing and healthy. Is it super great for bread? Maybe, maybe not. You never know. You know. So what do you keep yours in? 
Like so on your, if it's on your counter. If it is the winter, I will keep it in, like we have a cute mixing bowl that is like one of these like plastics or glass or just not metal. I mean like your natural products are I'm sure always better. Mm -hmm. I do use some of these bowls though because I have a lid for this one in the summer if gnats are a problem. But you still, it still needs to get air. So really you need to cover it like with a rubber band or something. Okay. But sometimes I can get by with using these lids not sealed. Like they are on it enough where the gnats really aren't getting into it. Mm -hmm. But most of the time I would do a towel in the winter, like this tea towel, and I would just place it over it and okay. be done. But if it's the summer, like cheesecloth or something like this with a rubber band to keep like bugs mm -hmm. out, cause they will be super attracted to it. So let's say you've had it go all week and you're mm -hmm. making pizza Friday. Yeah. I can use all of it but a little? Um, so or at that point you have to always, do not forget to reserve your starter back. So usually the goal is to only grow it to the volume that you need. So let's say it takes two cups starter for your recipe. You need like three cups made because you have to keep a cup back later. Oh, okay. So are you going to keep it back and just keep growing it for the next creation? Or are you going to stick it in a jar for a few days in the refrigerator or a year, you know, whatever. <laughs> and <laughs> so do not forget, like okay. the most important step is before you make something, reserve it and whatever okay. you're going to do. So if you're going to, like in this instance, I put some out of this, like, so normally at this point, because of I left it in a mixing bowl, I would use that to like go make something at this point. Okay, um, but okay. I've left a lot in there. That's a lot. Like, you know, like a pancake recipe, like a single recipe is probably only a couple cups of starter or whatever. Okay. And sometimes, like your pancake recipes, um, they'll still have a little bit of soda and stuff like that in it. Or some of them do. So you can, this is just curiosity question mm -hmm. because I've never, you just look up sourdough recipe, like, yeah. and it tells you two cups starter? I mean, yeah. what's this like? Yeah. Sourdough Home has a lot of like tried and tested ones. I'm sure there's hundreds out there yeah. now. I had an old school packet of paper that is filthy dirty from all the use of it. And that's what I used for my recipe. Or you can convert recipes. There's like a conversion like ratio of what to do. Okay. Like if it says this much yeast, they use this much it. starter. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's depending on how fermented mm -hmm. you yeah. want it to be, some recipes like quick breads, you'd only use like one of that and then you'd have flour that wasn't fermented. If you want it to be fermented, you'd have to let it sit overnight. It just kind of depends on how strict you want to be with your flour. Like, are you wanting it to be a fully fermented product? Or are you okay with a little bit of both? So it's kind of like where you are on your health, you know, whatever right. journey. Yeah. Right. I'm a little bit both or not when I did it more. I kind of went on both places, mm -hmm. but yeah, you can do so much with it. This good. Yes. You can do stuff so straight from this point. Yeah. Oh, well, you it. could just use that to do mm -hmm. stuff with you. Mm -hmm. I didn't do it that much. I don't feel like it's turned out that well. No. Like, I mean, you would have to add a little salt or whatever, yeah, like, some, yeah. some, like very minimal product to it okay. to come up with like a skillet biscuit or something like that. Mm. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of that. You know, I, I most of the time I made pancakes. They mm -hmm. were simple, easy, and it was fermented. Mm -hmm. it was yeah, that sounds awesome. Morning. It, it does. does. Yeah. Exactly. So you'd use like say two cups of this in with your sourdough pancake recipe. And yeah, like in your recipe, it's like super low key, like a tiny bit of sugar, some eggs, and the starter, and like oh, that's it. Okay. Like, super okay. simple. So my kids can pull this off, maybe. Yeah. Like that's what I keep it going for most of the time, honestly. I've seen waffles and pancakes. More pancakes than. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The bread is temperamental. It is like you have to like it's hit or miss. Like you have when to I was really making sourdough bread, my kids like loved it. They were so excited. Mm -hmm. I mean, every time the loaf comes out of the right. oven, I'm like, oh, give me But sometimes it doesn't turn out. Is that what you're well, saying? I feel like if you're gonna go into the bread, you really do need to keep your starter going most of the time yeah. and fed. And then once you're there, though, it's not hard. You just have to be committed to keeping it going. Mm -hmm. If you're like a lackadaisy like I am, my starter is more like for pancakes and stuff mm -hmm. like that because at least I'm getting a fermented product at the yeah. end. Yeah, and it's not quite as much a commitment. Yeah, it's not as like intense and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You're awesome. Sweet. Yes, yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> Happy sourdoughing. Yes. 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 Yes.